What did you do during the pandemic? Our first guest today took a hiatus from being a comedian to performing weddings in his backyard. Stay tuned for French Stewart. This is Lifestyle Magazine with your host, Roy Ice, and key experts, Mike Tucker, Dr. Sharmini Long, Lionel LaMountain, and Marie Mitchell. Joining us today is the talented actor, French Stewart, with credits like Third Rock from the Sun and Mom. French has brought laughter to homes all over the country. Man, I'm so excited to be able to have you here in the studio. Well, you won't in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I wear out my welcome pretty fast. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. I first connected with you when you had your character on Third Rock from the Sun. Right. An amazingly fun character. I immediately fell in love with you as an actor. How did you even come up with this very eccentric character? Well, the truth of it is I went in for my audition and uh, I, I, I had this great audition and I went home and I was pretty happy about it. And so um, uh, at that point in my life, I, I, I smoked some pot. And then they called me back immediately. And I was like, oh no, oh, I, I, I can't. And then, you know, I ended up playing somebody with squinty eyes for about, you know, six <laughs> years. <laughs> I always wonder, how in the world can you see around this? Second? Yeah, no, uh, you know, it's impossible. <laughs> No, it was like a, it was a really joyous time. You know, the people on that set are really kind and really yeah. smart yeah. and uh, uh, very lovely people. And so uh, every day was a joy. Yeah, but you didn't start there. Your career actually started much earlier. How did, how did you get started as an actor? Well, uh, um, I, I, I started, I, I uh, mostly started on the stage. Yeah. You know, I would go into 99 seat theaters and uh, work and I just sort of became a stage rat. Yeah. And then I would do big shows at big theaters or I would do small ones, but that's how I got my manager. And I've uh, been with her for 35 years. Yeah, 35 years. Yeah. In all that time, you've done a lot of stuff. Um, what's been your favorite? Wow. You know, I did one a couple of years ago uh, called Deadly Class where I played uh, just basically uh, a guy who's teaching, uh, he's like a serial killer who's teaching, uh, you know, kids how to be <laughs> sociopathic or whatever. And it was, just, it was just fun. It was just something out of my wheelhouse yeah. that uh, just sort of showed up. But also, you know, I liked being an Inspector Gadget. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, because it's something iconic. It's something that generationally people grow up with and, yeah. you know, so that was a joy, but uh, I've, I've always had a nice life and a good time. A pandemic hit and uh, that affected a lot of actors. How did it affect you? Well, I mean, uh, I had done a stage play every year, at least once a year, mostly twice since I was 19. Wow. And I'm 57 and so yeah. suddenly I didn't have that anymore. And so uh, one of my friends said, well, you know, we've got time to kill. We want to get married. Would you like to officiate our wedding? And I said, yes, <laughs> yes, I would love to officiate your wedding. I will create it. And so I put up a, a big canopy in the backyard with a dais and we put flowers and we made a thing and then I did the wedding. And then like a cup, of course, it's all about me. Of course, it has to be. Yeah, your wedding, your love doesn't matter about. It. <laughs> but then, uh, uh, you know, about a month later, somebody said, "Oh, hey, I, I heard you did a, a wedding <laughs> for Aaron," and I was like, "Oh yeah, oh uh, yeah, that's that's." They said, "I heard it went really well." I was like, "Oh, a good review <laughs> for me." And they said, "Would you want to do another wedding?" Yes, <laughs> yes, I will do another wedding. Oh, it'll be the best wedding since my last wedding. <laughs> And then at some point, you know, my kid was like, you know, she's eight years old. She says, well, are we gonna do Santa's Village this year? Or, or I guess that's not happening. I'm like, you will have a Santa's Village. And so I built a Santa's Village and I'm Santa, you know. And my wife is very patient with all of this, you know, but it, it just, uh, I think you find new ways to create in a vacuum. Yeah. 
and you find new ways to uh, have something joyous when things are a little bit dark, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it was, a, it was an interesting time. I think the first part of the pandemic, I was the father of the year. I was like, oh, I'm teaching her how to play chess. We're <laughs> painting a fence. And then after that, I was just, I, you know, I just kind of quit. No, after that, you were doing weddings. I'm doing weddings. Look, <laughs> look, don't bother me, kid. I'm doing weddings, you know? Watch some YouTube videos, you know? <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, our family, family is very resilient. And uh, I think we found a way to sort of... Uh, peacefully coexist and push on. Yeah, yeah, well, you're a creative. I mean, it's it's been a marked part of your career is you find solutions, you, you find yes. you find ways to, to do this. So throughout this pandemic, you've just found creative solutions to... We were making home videos with our family. Yeah. You know, we were, uh, my wife taught uh, our daughter ukulele it was very creative, you know? We yeah. just found a way, because what else can you do? Absolutely. Yeah. And, well, you can be depressed and go into darkness. But... You could do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's not as fun. <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, we're gonna have some more fun. We gotta take a break right now. But when we come back, we're gonna talk with French and his wife, Vanessa, is gonna join us to talk about film and theater the sense of community it's given to them and dealing with the isolation caused by the pandemic. So don't go away. We're back with French and a playwright with her own impressive career, his wife, Vanessa, to talk about their lives as entertainers and the effect that the pandemic has had on their careers. And we're also joined by our attitude expert, Lionel Mark LaMountain, to help us understand and unpack a lot of the things that we have to deal with during times like these. So welcome, Vanessa, glad you. you're here. <laughs> Thanks for having me as part of the conversation. Oh, you bet, you bet. So you're involved in theater. Tell me, how has this impacted you during oh. the pandemic? Goodness. Well, I mean, theater is very important to our lives, as he was telling you. That's how we met. We met, you know, backstage in a green room romance. Um, but <laughs> hey, you went into the wrong green room. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I kept going into the right green room. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Bothering me as I was trying to scroll on my phone. Yeah, she's phone. trying to scroll on her phone, and I come up and start talking to her. I snuck up on her like a panther in the night. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing a similar suit. Um, no, but the theater is all about community. It's yeah. all about you know building empathy and conversations. Right. And uh, and I just felt like in this really hard time right now, I, I just want to circle back to my community yeah. and start talking about things that matter to us. And it's really kind of what got me through uh, and got you know my my friends who are actors in the theater through as well. And we just start writing projects for each other, and then suddenly we're doing our art on Zoom which was weird, but we had to keep going yeah. and uh, and find a way to be on the other side of it because we are such a, a tight-knit community of artists. We and... have to have community. We have to have yeah. this interpersonal connection. And, and I think that's one of the biggest things that we've learned during the times of, of the pandemic is just how desperately we need this type of community. You know, it's interesting. You have the interpersonal connection that we need. Everyone has felt isolated. And yet during the same time, the interpersonal connection that was kind of forced upon spouses <laughs> <laughs> kind of had a shearing factor on their relationship. Yeah. It tells you where you are, right? <laughs> well, explain that a little bit more. Well, I, you know, we have a gentle family. Yeah. And I think that really paid off for us because we're all sort of, I mean, you know, Vanessa gets mad at me maybe once a year. Really? And then I go to Tiffany's. <laughs> I'm like, I'm wrong. I know that because like, she's like very reasonable. But, it, you know, it's an over-exaggeration. But at the same time, she's a very gentle person. And so I, I feel like she's sort of the steering wheel for our family okay. in a lot of ways. She was a, a hero during homeschooling. Like, we would take shifts. But, uh, but you know, there was a lot of it where I would like, you know, I turn on the, you know, I get I get her logged in to go to school, and I'm the tech person in the house. Yeah, she's a tech like, person. What's the Zoom button? <laughs> I don't get it. And, uh, yeah. I'm and like, when I and when I do get in there, I'm like, okay, well, suddenly I got it. I'm like, oh, I see a teacher. 
oh, okay, this is great. And then suddenly, like, you know, I realized, oh, I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> oh, I got to get out of this room like James Bond. I've got to figure out what to do, you know? So, uh, you know, uh, Vanessa oh. is uh, the center of, of our family and uh, it's a, uh, a very say. peaceful. Yeah, a beautiful thing yeah. Yeah. Well, no, but it's true. Except for know. the Machiavellian comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. earlier, earlier. They're yeah. talking about me. Oh, oh she, is Maca she is Machiavellian. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, she... that's the southern girl in me. That's right. She we walks to... quietly and carries a big stick. If we want something done, we just have to do it in a covert way. There that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Through <laughs> mental manipulation. I mean, like, oh, seems like a good idea. Love love for beautiful relationship. Yeah, it's working out so Guilt far. and shame added to it. But uh, <laughs> did your theatrical stuff, did your lighthearted approach to life, did that help you kind of get through? And do you have any tips for couples who might still be struggling? You know, I, I think during the quarantine, we went through all the, the stages that, the, you know, like he said, like the first bit of it, we were like, we're going to be the best parents ever. We're going to have calisthenics. <laughs> chess. I'm going to make bread. Yeah. You know, I'm going to teach her all the recipes that I've ever known. And then we went through like the denial part of the, you know, pandemic. And then, you know, now we're in the acceptance part of the pandemic <laughs> where we're just, I think we appreciate each other so much more because we were just in such close proximity for so long. And yeah. and his humor for me is, well, it's what attracted me to you. I, I need a, a funny person because, you know, I'm I'm like the shy wallflower and I'm like, please, you know, <laughs> please help me. And uh, and he just gets through the hard stuff with jokes. We make fun of the worst <laughs> stuff, you know, because um, yeah. if you can't laugh about it, mm -hmm. then you know, it's it can get really deep and sad. Yeah, I, I think I, I do a lot of the jokes, although you're super funny. But like, yeah. but but I do the jokes, and then she she really just drives the stick shift. You know, <laughs> I mean, she really does. She's just got this aptitude. Like, there's a lot of heavy lifting. That well, I do. think I, this is a lot of what it is. It's that he is very open about saying how much he appreciates me all the time mm -hmm. and giving me compliments, and you know, and we we try to just be very aware of like checking in with each other and like, how are you doing today? You know, where are you at? And sometimes it's not a good day, you know? And yeah. So, um, and how long have you been married? I can't remember. 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. We just celebrated our 10 year anniversary in June. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> it, it makes a huge difference. Most people are saying I'm looking for someone like me. Mm -hmm. But that's probably the worst thing for you. Um, well, my, my mother says... Tell her the quote. It, tell him the quote. It's, if it's, both of you are the same, one of you isn't necessary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Like, because you both have to... It's the same thing with just bringing things. It's like you should both have your individual life because then you're bringing something to the other person that's different than what they're seeing over and over and over again in you. Yeah, oh. but I think you guys also added an extra key to that because it's not just about your dissimilarities. What you've also added to that is selflessness mm -hmm. to where you're looking, are you doing okay? How are you doing? And I've seen that. We want to unpack this more, but we got to take a break. So don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to continue. Our discussion with French and Vanessa. Don't go away. No, don't listen to him. Go to the kitchen and get some food. <laughs> food. Marriage can be a beautiful thing, but it will always have obstacles. Communication and knowing when to laugh together are key components to a successful marriage, even when times are rough. We sometimes say hurtful things in the heat of the moment. And it's important to talk and make amends by the end of the day and maybe share a laugh at how insignificant the issue may have been. Sharing a sense of humor can help us stay positive during difficult times and help us stay focused on what's important to us. And we're back with French and Vanessa, an amazingly talented couple. Now, French, uh, French is your real name. It's not like yeah, Hollywood people make up apple, cocoa, all, all this stuff. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Your parents right. actually chose French. Yes, I am uh, Milton French Stewart the Fourth. Wow. The Fourth. Yeah. Uh, they had options. They could have said, the called fourth. you British or German or <laughs> South no. African or. Stick into the plan. <laughs> so I'm Milton French Stewart the Fourth, and each one is a, just a bigger idiot than the next. <laughs> Like, you know, the first one, like, killed a guy on the on a bridge in Virginia and then ran off into the woods. And then the second one was a boxer that was inappropriate with children. And then my dad was a, a professional con man. 
it took four generations to get to actor. <laughs> actor! <laughs> so it just, you know, I mean, why everybody was like, well, we got to keep this legacy going. It's just a, uh, an absolute mystery. Yeah, it, it's turned into a, a potato joke in our family. Like, so, like, our daughter yeah. calls him French fry. We call her tater tot. Oh, yeah. That's baby. Too. Yeah, and what did you Funny. turn out to be? Oh, I'm just so I'm hash brown. I'm just hash brown. In the <laughs> just hash brown. Yeah. Hashtag hash brown. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Hashtag. Oh, oh I, I already oh. like. Oh, it's that's a lot of likes. Oh. oh, that's awesome. Well, you guys, you've you've been involved with uh, trying to help theater. What what are you working on now in in the area of theater? Well, Vanessa has been tirelessly pushing legislation. I happen to be co-artistic director of a small theater in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. the one that gave me my start. Passion um, for small theaters? I, yes, it, it, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I work at uh, Sacred Fool Theater, and uh, my show, Louie and Keeley Live at the Sahara, started there when I was an unknown artist, an unknown writer, unknown actor, um, and we were, I was discovered in the small theater. And mm. um, my show went to the Geffen and to Chicago and all over the place, and that's how I met French, and it's how I have a career. and. So I have turned into an activist for emerging artists. Mm. I want them to have the same opportunity that I did for these unheard voices to be seen mm. and heard. So we've been working on uh, legislation called uh, SB 805, Senate Bill 805, uh, with uh, Senator Lorena Gonzalez. And um, the purpose of that is to uh, save small theaters and help uh, bring them subsidies so that they can survive this yeah. existential crisis that we're going through with the pandemic because, you know, audiences obviously haven't been coming to our theaters for a year yeah. and a half. And um, so it's, we made it through the Senate and the assembly and we are about to be on the governor's desk. Right. Um, so it has been um, a really um, interesting time. I never thought I'd be an activist or any kind of person helping with legislation, but um, my passion is to make sure yeah. that the new and emerging artists have their voices heard. I love this because, I mean, anyone who has a passion for something and has the ability to do something about it, that's how you live your best life. It's yeah. how you fulfill some of your life calling. Absolutely, and it's also, uh, you know, in a time where we're trying to get our economy up and running again, yeah. it's, it's people don't realize that these little theaters are next to a restaurant yeah. and they feed the restaurant. They, people wanna go eat they and then go see a show, and then it feeds the bar next to it where they go have a drink and they argue about what yeah. they've just seen. It helps the whole neighborhood. Which it oh. helps the neighborhood, which helps the city. It feeds, it feeds the soul, too, because people have been under a lot soul. of stress. Yes. They've been this, you know, they feel hammered, and, and so it gives them a bright moment during the day. They forget about their troubles, their worries. Life isn't so bad. Maybe yes. it shifts their focus and their perspective yes. a little bit. Yeah, it so it's very important work that you're doing. Thank yeah, you. and uh, it's all the way around. I, I love small theater because I've always felt like it was a small group of people making something for another small group of yes. people. It's like a, a handwritten letter. Like you get a handwritten yeah. letter now and you think, oh, wow, oh, <laughs> the grandma sent me something. Yeah. Or like some friend sent yeah. me something. Well, art know? creates empathy. And I think that that's something that we all could all use a little bit more of. Yeah. That's really beautiful. A little it's more absolutely, empathy. Absolutely true. This is kind of a little off the topic, but you've said something that is just amazing. You've said we're as sick as our secrets. I'm not. Oh, yeah. Can you it's, explain it's that? My, it, it's, a, it's a David Geffen quote. Yeah where he once said, I think they were asking him about his uh, personal life, and he said, well, I just felt like you're only as sick as your secrets. What does that mean to you, Vanessa? To me, that just means about being open and being um, a person who is living a, like an authentic life. And so I, I think about that quote often, just you're only as sick as your secrets. And I just, I feel like uh, I'm probably, uh, I think I'm 93% healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's, it's just, I think that's why we check in, like, are you okay? Are you Yeah, are how are you, you okay? doing? You yeah. know, um, no, you're right. I mean, and, and sometimes I, I'm i not great at um, sometimes letting go of my emotional load, you know, um, but when I do, I feel so much better. So. Yeah. Maybe the theater helps with that. It does. Yeah. Because it's, uh, you know, the thing that I always loved about the theater when I first got into it was that I didn't, somebody told me where I was going to walk, they told me where I was going to say, but at the same time, I was getting to get my feelings out via another person, and mm -hmm. it made 
gradually it gave me confidence in my normal life. Theater is good therapy. It really is yeah. for everybody, mm -hmm. you Listen, and us. As, yeah. Well, and especially at a time when people have been so isolated, yeah. and many of them have not been in environments to where that spontaneous connection, you bump into somebody that says, how are you doing? And it actually allows you to be able to share the secret things that are going on. Yeah, especially I think about my friends during the pandemic who uh, did it alone. Yeah. And that to me is just, you see them and you just almost want to cry because you just, it, it's, you know, it's hard enough when you have a, a lovely little family, but when you're just by yourself or with a pet, it, you know. So I was able to do the first um, live theater experience in Los Angeles that came back from the pandemic. We opened in May and it was because we had an outdoor theater. Hmm. And, um, and to be able to go out and bow again for the first time and take our first curtain call and to see the audience, they're all outside, they're all potted up, they're all, you know, masked. To see them go through that communal experience you know, of, of sharing a story, of sharing, a, a, having a shared space. And it was really emotional. It, it, it's just been very touching to gradually see old friends that you hadn't seen in a long time. And yeah. at a certain point, a, a Zoom meeting or Facebook doesn't, doesn't do it That's for right. you. It's not the same. What a gift that you've brought to gift of joy. LA and, and to so many people who have benefited from being able to feel this connection again. So thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but don't go away because right after this, I have a few final thoughts. Hey, go take a bath if you need to. <laughs>